Barr reports that an official involved with the program has said, quote, this is more than just a data center. It hopes to be the ultimate code cracking facility. According to another top official also involved with the program, the NSA made, made an enormous breakthrough several years ago in its ability to cryptonalize or break unfathomably complex encryption systems employed by not only governments around the world, but also many average computer users in the U.S. The upshot, according to this official, everybody's a target. Everybody with communications is a target. Every, everybody. You. Okay, and so you bought this software and put on your computer, or you're using a Linux system that has that has a program for it, and you want your home folder encrypted. So you put this encryption on your home folder so that nobody can steal your private data. And with some of you, we all know what that is, don't we? Okay, that's all your little dirty pictures. You don't want anybody to find out. Okay, that's why you got them encrypted on there. Okay, and you think nobody knows what you got doing going. Okay. Well, the NSA knows because they now are telling you they have the ability to crack that encryption. They got it. Somebody else does, too. I'll show you who it is in a minute. Uh, let's see here. Inside the facility will consist of four 25,000 square foot halls filled with servers, complete with raised floor space for cables and storage. In addition, there would be more than 900,000 square feet for technical support and administration. The entire site will be self-sustaining with fuel tanks large enough to power the backup generators for three days in an emergency. Water storage. Oh, my goodness. Uh, uh, electricity. All of this stuff going on. And then the article says this. Uh, Barney says Stellar Wind was far larger than has been publicly disclosed and included not just eavesdropping on domestic phone calls, but the inspection of the domestic email. At the outset, the program recorded 320 million calls a day, he says, which represented about 73 to 83 percent of the total volume of the agency's worldwide interpreters. You know what they're basically saying? We're going to listen to every cell phone call. And by the way, it, practically everybody's using their cell phones now. Text messages, data sent to and from, uh, GPS, your cell phone's a locator. They not only know what you said, they know what you texted and where you were when you said it. And when you took the picture, they knew it. Okay? What you surf it, what, what you buy over the internet, everything about you. And you said, well, <laughs> I'm going to get rid of my cell phone and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to unplug my computer and I'll be safe then. Not so fast. Here's another one. Came out this week. CIA chief will spy on you through your dishwasher. More and more personal and household devices are connecting to the Internet from your television to your car navigation systems to your light switches. CIA director David Petraeus cannot wait to spy on you through them. Let me stop right here. Let me, uh, let me tell you what little bit I know about the computer world. I just learned this, picked up little bits of information over the years. Okay, Java. Have you ever heard of Java? And I'm, no, I'm not talking about a cup of coffee. A JavaScript, okay? It's, uh, it's uh, a little programming language that's in practically every web browser and most websites will use what's called JavaScripts to get content onto your computer from another computer. That's how the internet works. You know what Java was originally written for? The programming language of Java was originally written for Toasters and microwave ovens and refrigerators and televisions. It was originally written for the time when personal household appliances would be able to perform more than just toasting, would be able to talk to one another. You've seen them market these new refrigerators. So you close the door, a little panel comes up and says, uh, you'll be out of milk tomorrow. Let's fill out a list for you. You probably need it. You know what? Don't worry about it. I, the refrigerator, have already called the market, and they'll be delivering some milk out here before breakfast tomorrow morning. And we go, man, this is so cool. Every, and, and okay, to all you conspiracy theorists out there, okay, who, you remember when, the, when they changed over from analog television to HDTV, and their conspiracy theorists were saying, it's a way to spy on everybody. I wasn't sure, because a guy had a YouTube video. This was the first year I did, did the watch broadcast. The guy had a YouTube video, and he opened up one of those converter boxes, because not everybody had the new TV. He had converter boxes. He said, look here. I found a spy camera in my, in my box. That's how they're spying on everybody. Well, I looked in mine and there was no camera. So I'm going, this is a hoax, okay? That was then. This is now. 
we couldn't have realized two years ago just how right the conspiracy people were in imagining a scenario where every appliance in our house, it's like HAL 9000, go back and watch 2001 A Space Odyssey. HAL 9000 cooks their meals, controls their air, controls everything about the little spaceship that's trying to get to the monolith in Jupiter. They're controlling everything about it, including the two astronauts who are figuring out that something's not right. They try to hide in one of the little external space capsules. You've seen the movie. And they're having a conversation where Hal can't hear them, but Hal has eyes everywhere and he's, he's reading their lips. And so he knows that there's a conspiracy against the computer because Hal knows everything. That was Arthur C. Clarke, 1968. And here we are. We have appliances in our homes carrying around cell phones, whatever, that have the ability to spy on everything that we're doing. Everything that we're doing. My lands. I put a, a network security camera in my house last night. Okay? And I told my wife, I said, you know, if we go away, I'd like to be able to check in every now and then, see, okay? Not a bad idea. I woke up this morning and I thought, you know, I am 90% sure that a government computer probably, all, and I don't know how to tap into it yet. I'm about 90% sure that a government computer already knows. It has a microphone on it too. I don't know. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 1. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Hmm. Stop right here. Cause and effect. Our wickedness drives us to paranoia. And our government is the most paranoid institution in the history of mankind because the government thinks that everybody's talking about them. Wickedness, cause and effect. The wicked flee when no, no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as lion. You know what? As I'm recording the Watchman video broadcast right now, it could very well be that from the time that I record this to the time it actually comes out on the internet on Sunday, the uh, entire conversation that I'm having probably has already been stored somewhere else. The righteous are as bold as a lion. You know what? I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. For the transgressions of a land, many are the princes thereof. Did you get that? For the transgressions of the land, many are the princes thereof. You didn't think that your refrigerator and your TV and your cell phone and your iPod and, and your computer and your toaster and all of your, your heater device, you didn't think that all of that stuff would be lording over you, but it is. But by a man of understanding and knowledge, the state thereof shall be prolonged. Now look at 2 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. This is God's ability. You see, let me stop here. Remember that encrypted folder that you have on your, on your computer and you don't want anybody to see, okay? God knows what's on there. You can't, you can't hide it. God, God knows. He knows. You're not hiding it from Him. And, of course, now you're not going to hide it from the devil either. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. So what this verse is saying is that God's eyes can see everything. God sees everything that's going on in the earth. Now remember what Lucifer wants. Isaiah 14, he says in verse 14, I will be like the Most High. That's what he says. Lucifer wants to be like God. Okay, Ezekiel 28, verse 2. Lucifer says, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God in the midst of the seas. That's what he says he is. He, Lucifer wants to be like God. He wants to be able to see everything. But he is not omniscient and omnipresent and all-seeing the way God is. God can just go, I see everything all at once. He doesn't need help. The devil needs help. So he's got a, a place there in Utah. He's getting help. All the appliances running these little computer programs and all these monitoring stations in your home. He's getting his help, people. The defense agency 
something, DARPA. Okay? You know what DARPA is. It's the Office of Information Awareness, a DARPA program, defense agency program, that believes that knowledge is power. So if we just know, and notice their logo, the all-seeing eye watching the whole planet, seeing everything that's going on. How can they do that? Security cameras and cell phones and refrigerators and microwave ovens that we're going to use and your TV set that we're going to use to spy on you. You're watching us. Well, we're watching you back. Okay? Because the devil wants to be like God. So here's a story that comes up. Um, Dar DARPA director bolts Pentagon for Google. DARPA director Regina Dugan will soon be stepping down from her position atop the Pentagon's premier research shop to take a job with Google, you know, the search engine. When asked what she would be doing for Google, she replied, spying on everybody, you nitwit. <laughs> what, what do you think I'm going to be doing? No, she, she didn't really say that. I, I just made that up. But think about it. The people who want to know everything about everybody in the world, the lady who runs that program, now is going to go work for Google. The people who want to know everything that there is to know about you. And they say there's no conspiracy. I want you to think of the beast for a minute. Okay, we talked about him. Cause and effect. The beast is simply the effect of all the wickedness that's going on. And remember, when there's wickedness in the land, there's many princes over everybody. Revelation 13, the Bible says, The beast which I saw was likened to a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear. His mouth is as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and seed and what? Great authority. See, he's going to run the show. You know why? You know, knowledge is power. He's going to have a system in place where he's going to know everything that needs to be known about everybody. And he will have great authority. Then we get to verse 16. He causeth all. One, two, three, four, five, six. Small and great, rich and poor, free and bond. To receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. And that no man might buy, think of buying and selling. Save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is six hundred and three score and six. So think about buying and selling. Okay, now, they're going to control buying and selling, which means that they had to be able to control all the commerce in the world, cause and effect. Okay? The effect is...